Osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma are benign tumors of bone, both of which are derived from osteoblasts. Since these tumors present similarly, I'm going to give you a quick visual mnemonic so you can keep them straight come test day. Let's first start with a bit of review. Recall from physiology that osteoblasts are the cells that produce bone. More specifically, they produce a substance called osteoid, and that osteoid is later mineralized into mature bone. At Pixarize, we use wet cement to represent osteoid, so cement mixers therefore represent osteoblasts. Because osteoblasts produce osteoid, got that? And what happens to wet cement after you pour it? Well, it hardens into concrete. And by now, I think you can probably see where this analogy is going. After osteoblasts produced osteoid, the osteoid is then mineralized, thereby forming mature bone tissue. So, wet cement hardening is our analogy for the mineralization of osteoid. With these symbols in mind, it should come as no surprise that this scene is taking place at a construction site. Specifically, the cement mixers here should anchor you to osteoid-producing osteoblasts, which should also help peg osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma. In fact, we've divided this image into two parts. The foreground represents osteoid osteoma, whereas the background represents osteoblastoma. Osteoid osteoma usually presents with a lesion less than 2 cm, whereas an osteoblastoma usually presents with a lesion that is greater than 2 cm. The numbers here aren't so important, but you should take away that osteoid osteoma is smaller than osteoblastoma. You might even say that osteoid osteoma is osteoblastoma's little brother. Long story short, we'll anchor the foreground with a small cement mixer and the background with a large cement mixer. First, we'll focus on osteoid osteoma, which we've put in the foreground here. Whoa, it's pretty high up here. Remind me, why did I take this job again? Anyway, the boss needs me to cement this beam into place. Or maybe something like that that makes more sense. See my small sled of cement mix? That's right, I'm taking it with me on this beam so I can cement this bad boy into place. Wait, what do you mean my cement mixer is small? Pfft, okay, tough guy. I'd like to see you brave the skies with a bigger cement mixer. This crane can only carry so much weight, and cement mix is heavy. Long story short, the cement mixer here is small because there's no way I'm putting anything bigger on this beam with me. And this should help you peg osteoid osteoma to the foreground of the scene, which is the smaller of the two tumors. Next, we'll talk about the long beam itself. The long beam here should help you remember the long bones, which is where osteoid osteoma usually occurs. More specifically, osteoid osteoma usually occurs in the cortex of long bones, and knowing this location will help you differentiate it from osteoblastoma come test day. Next, also notice how it's dark out. You might even say it's nighttime. I know, I know, they never said this job would be easy, but man, do I really have to do it in the dark? But really though, Swinging through the air on a long beam at night is way worse than working on the building scaffold. And if you can remember this, you should be able to remember that osteoid osteoma usually presents with pain that is worse at night. Next, turn your attention to the sled I'm using to carry my osteoid. I mean, cement mix. I'm using a sled because, well, there's no way I was getting a huge cement mixer on this beam. And if you've seen our previous videos, you would know that a sled is a recurring symbol for insets. It's the inset sled, or the in-sled. This is to help you remember that osteoid osteoma has pain that improves with inset use, which is again not the case for osteoblastoma. Some studies show Cox enzyme expression in osteoid osteoma, which may explain why osteoid osteoma is responsive to inseds. But I don't want to speculate too much for you. Just know that the pain in osteoid osteoma is responsive to inseds, whereas the pain in osteoblastoma is typically not. This is high yield, as it's going to give you a really nice way to differentiate between the two tumors. I also want to make a point about treatment here. Osteoid osteoma is a benign tumor of bone, and if the pain is responsive to NSAIDs, then you don't need to do anything else. There's no other treatment, surgical or otherwise. Just give NSAIDs and the pain should go away. So that's enough about osteoid osteoma. Let's now turn our attention to the building scaffold and osteoblastoma. First, notice how the cement mixer here is much larger. A big mixer for a big building, am I right? Again, osteoblastoma is the larger of the two tumors. Next, notice the shape of the building. The floor kind of reminds me of vertebrae. That's right, this axial skeleton of a building should remind you that osteoblastomas usually occur in the vertebrae, and not in the long bones. Additionally, notice how the construction site is well lit. 
This is because the pain in osteoblastoma is usually not worse at night. In other words, the pain is usually the same both during the day and at night. Just like the worksite here on the building. I can work all night if everything is well lit. It's no worse for me. Now take a look at the big cement knife our osteoblastoma worker is using to spread out all that osteoid. Remember how the treatment for osteoid osteoma is NSAIDs? Well, in osteoblastoma, the pain is not responsive to NSAIDs. In order to provide relief to patients, you must treat osteoblastoma surgically. Just think of the cement knife as a surgical knife, and you'll never forget that osteoblastoma is treated surgically. Next, let's talk about the typical patient for these types of lesions. Both tumor types tend to occur in young adult males, typically younger than 25 years old. And speaking of young adult males, just take a look at our construction worker here. He seems younger than 25, and he's certainly a male. Also, the osteoid osteoma guy fits a similar demographic, although I know you can't see my face. Anyway, if you can just remember young adult male construction workers, you'll have the epidemiology of osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma down. Next, I want to briefly touch on imaging. On test day, you'll often be given an image of the tumor before making your final diagnosis. Now we haven't symbolized any imaging here, but I want to talk about it quickly as it's pretty easy to reason through. Recall how osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma are tumors of osteoblasts. Also recall how osteoblasts produce osteoid, which is later mineralized into bone. X-ray beams are blocked by bone, which is why bone shows up so well on X-ray. On the other hand, X-rays pass right through osteoid, so osteoid appears radiolucent. In osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma, there's a whole bunch of osteoid lying around, way more than the body can mineralize. This leads to a nidus of osteoid. In response to the osteoid nidus, reactive sclerosis then occurs. This leaves these tumors with a thin shell of reactive bone. Makes sense, right? So on X-ray, osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma will present as a bony mass with a radiolucent core, kind of like this. Now, while we're talking about imaging, I also want to mention bone scintigraphy. Bone scintigraphy is a nuclear medicine technique in which radioactive tracer is found at sites of bone turnover. Since we know that osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma are tumors of osteoblasts, expect them to show increased uptake on bone scintigraphy. Don't spend time memorizing this though, as it's really easy to reason through. And that's it for osteoid osteoma versus osteoblastoma. Let's recap quickly, because I'm starting to feel like I'm going to fall. Osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma are both benign tumors of osteoblasts, which are the osteoid-producing, bone-forming cells in the body. Since these tumors both contain osteoid, they each present on x-ray as a bony mass with a radiolucent core. Osteoid osteoma is smaller than osteoblastoma, and you can think of it as osteoblastoma's little brother. But this little brother lives in the long bones, because that's where osteoid osteoma often occurs. It typically has pain that is worse at night, and that pain also improves with inside use. Osteoblastoma, on the other hand, is the larger of the two tumor types, and they typically occur in the vertebrae. The pain is not worse at night when compared to day, nor is the pain usually responsive to NSAIDs. Since the pain does not improve with medication, osteoblastomas are treated surgically in order to alleviate the pain. One final note, both tumor types are seen in young adult males, typically younger than 25 years old. And that's it for the- Ouch. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarize.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.